If we ever buy the house, we're gonna buy the house. It's a steal at sixty-five thousand, right, Dad? It certainly is. <laughs> Now, if you only tell me where to steal sixty-five <laughs> thousand, look, guys. I mean, I want the house as badly as you. I just don't know if we can come up with a down payment. We'll find a way, Dad. We've got to have that house. Honey, I'll try. Hey, don't lose that balloon. It's got the real estate lady's phone number on it. I've got it with my life. It's the most important number in the whole world. Oh, <laughs> Dad, I still got the number. Look, Dad, if you like the house, how can we told the lady it was a dump? Yeah, Dad, you sure made it sound like a shack. Well, you see, that's how you bargain. Say they're asking a hundred thousand, so you say this is a dump, and you offer forty. So they come down to ninety, and you come up to forty-five. Then they come back with eighty. You say fifty thousand dollars. That's it. Final offer. Rock bottom. Take it or leave it. Then. They say seventy. You say sixty. They say sixty-five. You say you got a deal. So you see, by using your head, you pay sixty-five thousand dollars for a home that's worth thirty. <laughs> Gee, that's pretty sneaky, Dad. Well, it's the American way. <laughs> uh, which one of you guys left the TV on? Not me. I didn't leave it on. Dad, do you want Diane and me to make your master bedroom into a real sex trap? <laughs> yeah, we'll get him a water bed. And a bearskin rug. I will put a mirror on the ceiling over the bed. What for? Uh, so Daddy will have somebody to talk to when he can't sleep. <laughs> uh, who left the cake out? Dad, all the stuff was put away when we left. Maybe there's a burglar in the house. Dad! <laughs> yes, Ruthie, don't do that. Well, the door to the balcony is open. Well, then get out of sight. <laughs> First time anybody took my advice before I gave it. <laughs> uh, get my gun, Ruthie. What gun? <laughs> That's the one, the bazooka. Yeah. Shh. I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Well, so do I. <laughs> Dad, that's somebody's body being dragged around in our bedroom. <laughs> All right, stay down. Okay. Call the police. Okay. <laughs> Tommy, <laughs> why don't you knock before you come in? You scared me to death. <laughs> Tommy, I'm going to do you a big favor. I'm going to kill you. Mr. Walder, if you want to be my father-in-law someday, Mike will talk nice to me. Kill him, Diane. <laughs> Tommy, you snuck into my house through that balcony. Well, there were people in the hall. I couldn't pick the lock. I mean, what's all the fuss about? I mean, I just came over to get my basketball. Well, you got it. Now dribble yourself out of here. <laughs> Now, look, I'm going to go in the other room, do a little arithmetic, and see if we can come up with a down payment. Oh, we'll do it, Dad. You know, we should have lots of extra money after all those jobs you've been doing. Yeah, Dad. How much did they pay you for opening that supermarket? Well, a hundred dollars. I bought a pound of meat, and I was broke again. <laughs> hey, uh, what's going on? Oh, we're going to buy a house, Tommy. It's not definite, Tommy. Oh, yes, it is. We're going to get the greatest house. You going to move on account of me? No. Why do you ask? My grandmother did. <laughs> hey, guys, the house costs. Look. How much does your old man make a week? None of your business. Just being practical. 
At his age, he doesn't have too many productive years left. <laughs> you don't want us to move, do you, Tommy? Doesn't make any difference to me. Oh, come on, Tommy. I mean, you know you'd hate it around here without us, right? Cut it out, Ruthie. You're going to blow my image. <laughs> No, it takes time to get this right. <laughs> oh, hi, Tommy. Hi, Teach. If a kid gave you an apple, would you give him a better grade? Am I? They're all on the take. <laughs> well, how'd the house hunting go? Oh, we saw a great one overlooking the river. Uh, yeah, Dad's in there right now deciding how we're going to make our down payment. Well, you know, I sure hope he knows how to handle those real estate people. They're pretty tricky. Oh, not for Dad. We've got it all worked out. Do you know we're going to get a $30,000 house for only $65,000? <laughs> I wonder if your father would like to buy my watch. <laughs> oh, we just got to pray we get that house. Ooh. What are you doing? Well, I figure if the Indians can do a rain dance, then we can dance for money. <laughs> See, I can get 1500 from the credit union and uh, sell the bonds. That's. Uh, and um, with the loan on my life insurance, <laughs> we are still $3,000 short. <laughs> Make that $3,000.85 because the batteries just went dead in this sucker. Hey, Dad. Oh, uh, what about those extra jobs Morgan's lining up for you? Yeah, what about that job at the cheese festival? I turned it down, honey. I'm not going to play King Curd for 75 bucks. <laughs> King Curd? Yeah, I, w I was supposed to wear a cheddar crown and shorts made out of jack cheese. <laughs> hey, we'll, we'll get a house someday. We'll see. Yeah, but the one in the river is our house, Dad. And it's been a whole week and it hasn't even been sold yet. I looked at there's lots of ways of making money. You know, I saw this movie once. It was called uh, Waterloo Bridge. This lady kept hanging around in the falls, and these nice men kept giving her money. <laughs> I wonder uh, how much she would have made on a clear day. <laughs> Larry, we have to talk. Look at this newspaper. Robert Kinsley of Station KBEX was crowned King Curd at the Cheese Festival instead of you. Hello, Morgan. Uh, I believe you know my daughters and you've met the couch. Don't get cute with me, Larry. I'm furious. Look at this. He got all this publicity and that's the name of the game, pal. I don't believe it. How could you turn down the Cheese Festival? Well, uh, I figure you lose a little dignity when people can make cheese sandwiches out of your shorts. <laughs> dignity? I don't believe you talked about dignity when you asked me to find you extra work. I'll do anything, Morgan, was the exact quote, I believe. Okay, I suppose this one is beneath your dignity. Never mind that it's going to make page one all over the state, and it pays $200. $200? He'll do it. The hatchery people want a celebrity to wrestle a salmon. <laughs> Before or after spawning. <laughs> All right, I knew you'd say no. Okay. This one's for five hundred dollars. Five hundred? He'll do it. <laughs> for a mattress company, and they absolutely guarantee your safety. You jump from a one hundred fifty foot tower into their thirty nine dollar mattress. <laughs> Morgan, I want work, not death. Fine, okay. I've been saving this one for last. It's not too dignified, but it's a biggie. $2,500. I'll do it. I'll do it. $2,500? Uh, I couldn't make half that on Waterloo Bridge. <laughs> uh, what, um, what do I do? MC a beauty contest. Now, that's the kind of work I like. I've done a lot of those. The girls will be nude. So what? I need the money. <laughs> you mean nude like like in the shower nude? They'll be naked as an egg. <laughs> oh, Dad, you didn't have to do an awful thing like that for us. Oh no, Dad, we just we just couldn't ask. No, 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 no sacrifices. <laughs> Too great for my daughters. Who do I contact, Morgan? Oh, are you sure this one isn't below your dignity? I know how low my dignity can get. <laughs> Do I All right, right here. Robust health, beauty pageant, Mrs. Grace Boylston. Robust health. Has a nice ring to it. <laughs> you really gonna do it, Dad? 
I'll force myself. <laughs> Look, guys, maybe, just maybe, we have ourselves a house. Oh, hey, where's the balloon? I'm going to go call the real estate lady and tell her we're getting close. Come on. Okay, what's the rest of it, Morgan? Rest of what? 2,500 bucks is a lot of money. How come they're giving me that much just to tell a few jokes and introduce a few miles of naked flesh? <laughs> uh, okay. Um, out of that uh, few miles of naked flesh, <laughs> six foot three of it's going to be yours. <laughs> Everybody on stage has to be naked. Naked? <laughs> you want that house, don't you? Well, <laughs> dignity isn't everything. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, Lair, I'll, uh, I'll be seeing you. Maybe all of you. <laughs> Francie, I'm moving the crown presentation this year. It'll follow the rose garland, okay? Fine, Mrs. Boylston. Oh, Earl. Our problems, Mrs. Boylston? This is your first year with us, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Do you know about the sound problem with a nude audience? Uh, yes. <laughs> I've got to be very careful because the sound bounces off all that naked flesh. <laughs> uh, who's your MC this year? A local radio celebrity, Larry Alder. Larry Alder? I'm his engineer at the radio station. Oh, but I'll quit my job to work here permanent. <laughs> Talk to you later, Mrs. Uh -huh. Boston. Hello. Hiya, gorgeous. We're going to be seeing a lot of each other. I'm the engineer. I noticed your caboose. <laughs> okay, Blondie's spotlight goes out. Oh, fine. Send him right up. Mr. Alder's on his way up. Will you see if you can find him a chair? Sure. <laughs> Mrs. Boylston? Oh, call me Grace, Larry. We are delighted to have you. Well, we have a few things to talk about. Uh, yes, yes, we have. Oopsie. <laughs> um, I hear from very unreliable sources, may I say, that everybody in the pageant is nude. Yes. Now, these are the contestants. Everyone. Even you, Mr. Alder, if that's what you're trying to say. Well, you put your finger right on it. <laughs> Larry, this is a health organization. We're not some sleazy group glorifying obscenity. We're not promoting sex. We're promoting healthy-looking bodies. Uh, could I wear a long necktie? <laughs> This is last year's winner. She'll be standing on your right when you announce the new queen. And uh, Francie here is last year's runner-up. She'll be standing on your left. And uh, all three of us will be... Nude. Nude. They'll be nude. I'll be naked. Look, um, Mrs. Boylston, couldn't I just wear bathing trunks? Bathing trunks? Well, they'll be taking pictures. <laughs> That's well. Larry, everybody in the place is going to be nude. Or you'd stand out like a sore thumb. Well, I mean, does everybody have to be nude? Uh, Mrs. Boylston, I know all about the body being nothing to be ashamed of and all that. But, I mean, look at you. You're wearing a dress. These girls, uh, they're wearing bathing suits. I mean, if you feel so strongly, uh, why isn't uh, everybody nude right now? Well, for one thing, Charlotte comes to work in a convertible. <laughs> Well, her top's not down now. <laughs> you know something? In spite of everything you say, I think it's human nature to be modest. Oh, is that so? Larry, unzip me. <laughs> Girls, take off the suits. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Shows you what I know about human nature. <laughs> Larry, we're talking health. We promote health, vigor, and wholesomeness. We're not all beautiful. Some of us are too fat or too skinny or, or lumpy in the wrong places. Yeah, I'm in there somewhere. <laughs> it doesn't matter, Larry. 
Everybody in our organization is healthy in body and spirit. Now, how about you? Look, Mrs. Boylston, I just keep picturing myself walking around on that stage, making announcements, telling jokes, crowning the winner without a living soul staring at my face. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm afraid I can't do it. Not even for $2,500? $2,500. Everybody's naked? Everybody's naked. <laughs> even him? Even him. I stand behind him. Larry, we'd really like to have you. You'd be our first big celebrity. But I've got to have your answer by tomorrow. And if it's yes, you'll want to study these. Call me. And remember, it's nude or nothing. Nude or nothing. <laughs> Larry? Girl, hey, I heard you were going to MC this thing. Boy, I wish I were in your shoes. Well, uh, they'll be backstage with the rest of my clothes. All these contestants, all wearing skin-tight skin, all parading past us. I'm sneaking in a little camera. I'm going to take some snaps. Keep me warm on cold nights. Where are you going to hide the camera? In my shirt. You know, I have a little... Why are you shaking your head? You won't be wearing a shirt. Sure I will. You know that plaid shirt that I have? I have... Why, why are you shaking your head? Because everybody will be nude, Earl, including you. Why are you shaking your head? Me, nude... No way! Larry, there are parts of me that even I haven't seen. <laughs> so you'll see him in tomorrow's newspaper. <laughs> tomorrow's newspaper. <laughs> Mrs. Boylston? <laughs> oh, hi, Dad. Listen, you know, Diane and I were just getting ready to make dinner, and then Morgan came over, and then Leona came over, and then Morgan brought a stew, and then Leona brought a cake, and it was a good thing they did, because our meal was lousy, and theirs was great. We're going to go get some ice cream in a minute. Are you going to get naked? <laughs> we'll see. Oh, great. We're going to get the house. Ruthie, do you want your father to be embarrassed? There is nothing wrong with getting naked, Diane. Dad says that the statues are naked. <laughs> yeah, but you never see statues of old people like that. <laughs> On behalf of senile fathers everywhere, thank you. Morgan, would you go naked to get a great house? Well, let's see. I'm a modern woman, given a, a warm hall, everybody bare, a sense of dignity and decorum and a true philosophical approach to health and muscle tone. Not on your life. <laughs> see? But if I wanted a great house and a nice place to raise my girls, maybe. Really? See? Well, let's put it this way, Larry. At least they'll all be wearing the same outfit. Yeah. <laughs> Only your father got his a little wrinkle. <laughs> Look, I just haven't made up my mind yet, okay? I mean, I um, just can't picture myself doing something like this. Well, there's nothing to it, Dad. Come on, let's everybody take off our clothes and show Dad. Hold it. Hold it, honey. Now, I would. But, you know, I don't think your father could take all my pucker chewed at one time. <laughs> Uh, okay, kids, let's go get that ice cream. Your father wants to do some thinking. My treat. Good idea. Goodbye. Bye. See you, Larry. Oh, Dad? Hmm? They've got your favorite flavor in this week. What? Peeled peach. Ow. <laughs> and here's the host of the pageant, Larry Alden. <laughs> 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 
evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the fourth annual Robust Health Beauty Pet. It is a testimony to our common purpose to see you out there, 400 strong, as vigorous, and as naked as nature intended. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we particularly want to welcome our chair lady, Mrs. Grace Boylston, here on my right. <laughs> uh, and we'd like to introduce last year's Queen Robust, Charlotte Bakewell, just your left. And a special welcome to all the friends and relatives of Robust Health. <laughs> uh, I gotta remember not to do that. <laughs> okay, uh, before we uh, start the pageant of health, let's hear a round of applause for the men and the women of the orchestra behind me. <laughs> behind me? hope they don't have a trombone. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Before we meet our contestants, here is last year's King Robust, Reverend Warner Donaldson. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't going to work. Come on, Alder, get a hold of yourself. It's 2500 bucks. Nude or nothing. <laughs> and now... For the Parade of Health, from the East Archway, Miss Camp, Pine Meadow, Edith Marshwell. She loves Beethoven, Brahms, and Welsh mining songs. <laughs> and uh, from the West Archway, here comes Miss Eddie's Jim, Luann Tinsley. Luann is a legal secretary and wants to bring peace to the world through granola. <laughs> through granola? Oh, boy. And from the Middle Archway, from Charlie's All-American Meat Market, Miss Good Bumps Johnson and her famous sausage dance. Oh, dear Lord, he started a new religion. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen, for the opportunity of a lifetime. See Larry Alder shake and see him wiggle and see him make a complete fool of himself. Yes, sirree, Bob. You can watch him shake and you can watch him wiggle because it's going to be your last chance. Because I'm not going to do it. Well, I'm going to call Mrs. Boylston and tell her to get a replacement. Maybe King Curd will do it. <laughs> Bye, kids. You get that house. You see. Bye. Bye-bye. We're not going to get the house. Huh, Dad? No, not this one, honey. Oh, there'll be others, Ruthie. Sure there will. Anyway, we'll be getting married soon, huh, Diane? Yeah, and I'll be married even before you. And my husband will buy me a big house in the lake. Yeah, my husband will buy me a great big house in the country. Well, how about you, Dad? Well, uh, I won't need a house. I'll spend uh, six months on the lake and uh, six months in the country. LAUGHTER 